Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna make a prop that's been requested many times. It's the Matrix of Leadership from Transformers, the movie. This was the hand-drawn animated movie from the 80s, and the appearance of the Matrix actually changed from shot to shot, even within the same scene. So I'm gonna take all the details that I like and put them together into one prop. First, I printed some reference pictures and scaled them close to the size that I wanted. To make the center core, I used a ball from the dollar store and pulled a pattern using Evil Ted's technique of aluminum foil and duct tape. I measured the ball to figure out where the equator should be and then draw a pattern from my hemisphere. I can cut my pattern out and mash it flat to transfer it to a poster board, which then makes it easier to trace onto the foam. I use a heat gun and part of a plastic punch ladle to put the curve shape back into the foam. That way, I can follow my pattern marks and glue all the pieces together into two hemispheres. To make the second layer of the core, I make another aluminum pattern, carefully draw on one of the shapes that'll make up the six pieces, cut it out, and cut six more pieces of EVA foam. I was also able to use the pattern to mark where to cut the opening so you can see the central core. Bending and curving all the foam causes the edges to curl a little, so I sanded everything down to be flat. The two halves don't make a perfect sphere. So I trace a pattern, and I cut a couple of rings of five millimeter craft foam to make up the difference. My plan is to have the matrix separate, just like it does in the movie. So I've traced out where I want to put pairs of magnets that will hold the halves together when it's finished. Flipping the same pattern over on each half will let me mark right where each pair of magnets should go. I use the tip of a grinding stone on my Dremel to make a place for the magnets to fit, and then I can just glue them in. I also made sure the magnets are paired correctly, so both halves will attract to each other and stay shut. The pull of the magnets may be stronger than the glue is on the foam, so I cover the magnets with poster board. This will also hide them when it's painted, and it'll help keep the foam from warping, keeping each half round. I cut the opening for the center core, and I glue on the six outer pieces. I made a mark in the back so all the pieces can line up easily, and I glue on a ring of EVA foam for a little extra detail. I've got the basic shape for the centerpiece, so I'll start working on the Energon core. Now I want it to light up, so I'm going to use a 100mm plastic Christmas ornament. I can use stained glass spray paint on the inside to make it blue, and then I can spray glue on some leftover shipping foam that'll act as a light diffuser and give a texture to the Energon core. For a light source, I'm just going to use three $1 LED headlamps from Walmart. Now I'm worried about the Energon core's weight, so I disassemble all the LED headlamps, and what I want to do is solder them all together to one battery, and if I could bypass the on-off buttons, then I would put in one switch to turn them all on and off at the same time. But the resistors needed for the LEDs are right next to the buttons, and I can't separate them. So I really wanted to Frankenstein together some sort of lightweight, light center for the core. I took everything off, soldered stuff together, and hooked up a 9 volt battery, and promptly burnt out two of the boards. So I only had one working LED. That made me very happy. Well at least this is carried at Walmart, they're a dollar, I could go get some more. It took three stores to find some in stock, so I bought a whole bunch. And this time, I will keep it simple and glue the flashlights right to a piece of PVC pipe. Now, I can still pull the backs off and change the batteries, so that's good. I'm going to connect a couple of badge retrievers right through the center of the pipe and wrap more foam around it all to help diffuse the light even more. Then I can just snap the ornament together on top of that. So when the halves of the matrix separate, the core will be suspended between them. I'll have to take the ornament off every time I want to switch the lights on or off, but this is the simplest way I can think of to light up the core. I need the Energon core to rest in the center of the foam body and not roll around like a giant googly eye. So I cut some blocks of soft polyfoam and hot glued them to the inside of each half. I used six total and it worked really well. My plan is to simply hot glue the badge retrievers to each half of the core. I cut a space to hold them in the foam and then just tack them in with hot glue for now. I'll pull them out and glue them in better later, after I paint everything. Now I need the handles. So I figure what size I need, I scale the printout down just a little, and I make the pattern on poster board, and then I can trace it out for cutting. I plan to cut the basic shape from pink insulation foam. And now this is not beaded styrofoam, but extruded rigid foam. Now it's still polystyrene, 
but it's one extruded piece and not just a sheet of ice chest foam ready to shed beads at every chance. This foam can still break easily, so I want to try something I saw on Beyond Geek, where they wrap this foam in masking tape and cover it with watered down wood glue and paper towels. It's how most of the giant art for the bicycle cars are made, and it ends up being really tough. And I'm not sure how well it'll work on such a small piece, but the idea is cheap and strong, so I wanted to give it a try. To make the finger holes, I want to cut down some wood paint stir sticks. Now these are the big ones for a five gallon bucket. I set my table saw to be the same as the width of the pink foam and then rip the stir sticks down. Then I can cut little squares for each finger hole. It worked really well and I'm very glad that I wore my safety glasses. I just hot glue the wood together. I marked the size and the pink foam and cut out a place for them to go. With the finger holes in place, I wrap each handle with masking tape, and I try to keep the tape as smooth as I can without huge wrinkles. This tape process was easy, but it took a while, especially with the curve of the handles. To make the raised panels, I grab some self-adhesive foam that I bought on clearance a while ago, and I'm going to cover it with glue and paint it silver, so who cares if it's green now? I added two more pairs of magnets on the handles to help hold them together. The magnets are covered with poster board to keep them in place, just like I did in the core. Now to paint on the glue. What they used was just watered down wood glue or PVA glue. Now you can paint this stuff right onto the EVA foam, but I wanted the extra strength I would get from the added paper towels. I suppose a cotton fabric would work too, and it might be smoother, but I was trying to use easy low cost materials. I cut pieces to fit the shapes and pressed the paper towels into the panel lines of the coffee stir stick. It was working really well, but it's time consuming to put on the paper towels cleanly. But to speed up the dry times, I can put the handles in front of a fan. All right, that actually turned out better than I was expecting. I knew the paper towel and the glue would make it a little gloppy and not a perfectly smooth surface, but honestly, this is better than I was expecting. I'm gonna give it a quick shot of silver spray paint and see how it looks. But I'm thinking I'm still gonna go ahead and give it a second shot. I'm gonna cut out a whole nother one, cover it with styrene plastic, and then just spray paint it, and it should end up perfectly smooth. I glued sheet styrene plastic right to the foam and cut the shapes out with a bandsaw. I sanded the edges a little and then started to cut out strips of styrene to cover all the pink foam. I'm gluing the styrene together using a water-thin solvent glue called Weld On 4. It sets almost as quickly as super glue and is very strong. Now, of course, the pink polystyrene foam melts when the glue touches it, but it's minimal damage, and it's only going to be in the corners, so the foam is still good enough to make a tough handle. I cut the side strips oversize, glued them on, and then trimmed the excess off. This is actually pretty easy to do. I used some thicker sheet styrene to make the finger holes, and I layered it in with some of the thin stuff that I'd used on the foam. It's easy enough to cut styrene with a razor knife, so I didn't need to use the table saw this time, but I thought about it. For the raised panels, I just add a second layer of styrene. I used small clamps to hold the curves together until the glue was set, and to get the tight curve at the top of the handle halves, I heated the styrene with a heat gun and bent it to shape. The plastic handles are going to be a little heavier than the PVA glue version, so this time I added two sets of magnets to each end, and instead of poster board, I cover them with pieces of the plastic package that the magnets came in. So I'm almost finished with the plastic one, and I'm really happy the way this one turned out. I really like the clean lines of the styrene plastic on top of the pink insulation foam. Now something I find interesting is it took me about the same amount of time to work on this one and make it as it did to make the one that is paper towels and wood glue. So the choice actually becomes, what are you more comfortable working with? Are you comfortable working with styrene plastic and solvents, or would you rather work with paper towels and wood glue? Either way, you're gonna get handles that work. But I'm gonna go with the plastic one, because I like the smooth, clean lines that it has. So that's what I'm gonna use on my build. With a quick finish sanding, the styrene is ready for silver spray paint. I need to add the final details to the EVA core, and the first thing I want to do is cut panel lines on the outside. Now all I have to do is cut a little bit into the foam and then heat the foam with the heat gun. Using the heat gun makes the foam shrink just a little and the panel lines will open right up. Now I have a collection of parts and pieces that I can use for details. And most of this stuff came from disassembled flashlights that I had used for lightsabers. But I'm also gonna use some PVC pipe and some PEX pipe too. I cut up places for everything to go with a grinding stone on my Dremel. 
and he used a sharpened copper pipe to drill a hole all the way through for the lenses to be able to light up. Now, these lenses are for the focusing lenses from flashlights, and I'm actually gonna glue them in upside down, and I tape off the areas that I don't want spray painted. A couple of coats of spray paint, and they're all good to go. I had taped all the little pieces onto some scrap so they wouldn't blow away when I was painting them. The handle is dried, so I can mark and cut out small sections of the core so the handle can get glued on later. I was careful to cut enough that the core pieces didn't get squeezed so the halves of the core would still line up and be round. But I did cut a little too much off the second piece, so I just glued back in some filler to close the gaps. Now I want a second color on the panel lines, so I tape off everything I want to keep this aluminum color, and then I can spray paint the rest the same steel color as I did with the little parts. I pulled out the foam blocks from the inside of the core and removed the badge binders. Now I can paint the inside of the core bright silver, and I can prime the outside with white Plasti Dip. The white Plasti Dip undercoat will allow the orange color to be brighter. If I painted orange right over the gray foam, the orange would be a little muted. I didn't like the look of the square blocks of foam inside the core, so I cut some new round ones to hold the Energon sphere in place. I oversprayed the secondary color with some black paint because I was afraid it wasn't different enough from the base color. And now that the handles are dry, I can peel all the blue tape off. Now this is actually kind of fun. You get to peel all the tape off and see all the colors together. I add some dark silver color to the low parts of the orange core, and it takes two coats of craft paint to cover the orange. Once the craft paint dries, I seal the orange halves with clear gloss coat spray paint. Now I can glue all the pieces together. That's the top. I just hot glue the handles to the orange cores, making sure both pieces are flush so the halves will stick together the best. And then I hot glue the badge retrievers in place, this time with a ton of glue, and I add the new round Energon core supports. Then I just use super glue to glue in the detail pieces. Some of them just drop in, but others have layers to get their final look. I just need to string it together, turn on the lights, and pop on the Energon sphere. And there is the Matrix of Leadership from Transformers the movie. And it's extremely screen accurate. It even has the string that holds the core in place. If you actually look in the movie, it's really there. No, really. Now remember, there's many different ways that you can make a Matrix of Leadership. But this, this is how Odin makes. You can help support my channel on my Patreon page, where I give away props made right here in the show. This month's winner is Will Givler, and he won my stasis tube prop with a plush chestburster. Yeah, so this is actually from DIY Prop Shop, but I made it right here in the same building. If you like the video or have ideas or something for me to make, please leave them in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. It's the Matrix of Leadership from Transformers the Movie, the animated one. Yeah, no, the cartoon animated one. They're all animated.